I just moved to the country from the city. A newly minted ruralist, a rube's rube. I am a downtown baby boomer, but bucolically befuddled. Strange things are happening to me out here in the hinterlands. Not only my sense, but my sense of justice are in chaos. Oh, for the simple life of the city. Let me give you an example. I spent a great deal of time on the back porch. No railing is needed for the deck slams into a 30-foot high slope. There's a garden there. I don't look down at the flowers. The flowers look down at me. It feels as if I'm on stage. Bees buzz around trying to find better seats. Uh, hummingbirds fly in, check out the entertainment and leave. And I'm Oedipus, or Hamlet, or more likely some Neil Simon character here to amuse Mother Nature's theater-going public. Well, those are the easy days. Rougher ones include wrenching inner challenges to deeply held beliefs. It's Paul the Chipmunk who has been the catalyst for all these self-doubts. Paul is too much fun. At first skittish at the sound of me, because he doesn't see very well, it wasn't long before I was simply an obstacle. He'd stop, sniff, and nimbly negotiate my big toe. After a few days, it dawned on me that most of his activities involved rummaging for food, so I balled up a section of bran muffin and threw it at him. He nudged it with his nose, packaged it with his mouth, and scurried away. Paul was happy. And the next morning, he started bugging me. Practically perched on my foot, he looked up and waited. I assembled another treat, bent over, and before I could give it to him, he jumped up and knocked it out of my hand. I guess he thought I was a tree whistling in the wind. Eh, I'm giving myself too much credit. I was probably nothing more than a branch to him. An ugly, slimy rat shot out from under a rock. I grabbed a shovel and tried to beat its head in. The thing was too fast for me. All I ended up doing was putting a dent in the shovel. And, scaring the hell out of Paul, he was gone. And did I ever feel bad? The poor fellow was probably quivering in a hole somewhere, saying to himself over and over, Boy, you can't trust those walking trees. But for me, it was a time for philosophical inquiry. I thought to myself, okay, so here I am, feeding and caring for Paul. Yet as soon as I see a rat, I want to bash its head in. Hey, we're talking about Paul's cousin. Maybe they know each other, hang out together, who knows? It's just that wailing on one and not the other is like seeing a beautiful dog, petting it, getting it a dog biscuit, and then having some smelly mutt show up and taking a baseball bat and... Well... I've been pretty secure in my liberal political beliefs, but was I becoming a rodent racist? To my horror, I even find I have very strong opinions about mice now. Less intent on genocide, I'm more of a separatist. Live and let libs, just so they don't move in. During my days in the asphalt jungle, it was so much easier. You just killed anything with four or more legs that didn't meow or bark. Now I'm pressed to discriminate. If the tail is cute, it lives. Soon, no doubt, I'll be forced to wrestle with other moral dilemmas. Bumblebees versus yellow jackets, for example. There are just no easy answers out here in the wilderness. Ah, oh, do I wish for the simple life of the city. Mm -hmm.